Good morning. This is uh, March 29th, 2020. And this is the second Sunday our uh, congregation has been having worship via conference call, and I'm also going to record the Bible text and my sermon for anybody who would take to like to take a look after the fact. Um, longer story today from John chapter 11. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, was sick. So the two sisters sent Jesus, sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, this happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, only a few days ago, the people of Judea were trying to stone you to death. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of the world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, uh, Lord, if he's sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant that Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there, for now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to console Mary and Martha in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. She said, yes, he will rise at the, when everyone rises at the last day. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. Now Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him, and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? They told him, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him. But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, he told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? 
So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all the people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a headcloth. And Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Friends, this is the word of the Lord from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. This is a really intense story with a lot of moving pieces. And to break it down, I want to look at it from the perspective of the various characters. I'm going to start with Lazarus as the epicenter and work out from him. Lazarus is sick, gravely ill. We've all been sick, and at this particular moment in history, a lot of us are afraid of getting sick. We don't know anything about Lazarus' illness, so let's just assume it started with a dry cough and a fever, and then took a turn into severe breathing difficulties. He probably wasn't thinking clearly in this state. He was probably confused. He was probably afraid as he struggled to draw breath but he was comforted by the presence of his sisters, Mary and Martha. They did what they could, putting wet cloths on his forehead and trying to get him to swallow some water. He knew that they cared about him from the way they cared for him. At some point, he found he couldn't take another breath, and he died. I don't know if this was traumatic or if it was just a slow sinking into death. But he did die. Fortunately for Mary and Martha, his illness wasn't contagious. It wasn't COVID-19. Their own lives weren't in jeopardy. But all of this was very hard for them nonetheless. It's so hard to watch someone you love suffer. You feel so helpless. You wish with all your heart that you could make them better. Their religious faith was active at this time. It was active in two ways. First, they had faith in the promises of God. Martha says it out loud. He will rise when everyone rises at the last day. Death is not final. We believe in the resurrection of the dead. At that day, we will be with our loved ones in paradise, in heaven. It's important to remember that, to keep the big picture in view. But at the time of shock, and grief, our faith comes into play with angry questions or even accusations. God, if you love everyone so much, why didn't you keep my brother from dying? It's a fair question. And Jesus doesn't duck it when both sisters jab their fingers at him and say, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus is affected by all of this. We are told that he was troubled and that a deep anger welled up within him, and that he wept. Jesus experiences all the stages of grief, too. And by the way, I don't think he was angry at Mary or Martha. Their questions are very human, and he understands and loves us humans. No, his anger was part of a normal human reaction to a tense moment where he was confronted with grief and suffering. And where it hit home for him was that his friend was dead. Probably hit him like a gut punch. Grief and anxiety are like that, even for Jesus, all the more for us. And he will never condemn our human reactions to them. He just loves us. I want to briefly mention the crowd outside the tomb. It says they were also inside the house consoling the sisters. What a beautiful thing to do. At a time of grief and loss, people really do want to do what they can to be helpful. They probably brought tuna noodle casseroles and deviled eggs. And they made lemonade. They sat quietly and shared memories of Lazarus. Every time Martha got up to try and play hostess, they playfully told her to sit down. They'd handle it. When it comes to losing a loved one, Either everyone has already been there or know that they will be there. 
And so it really is a good idea to support people in grief and for them to let themselves be supported. And when Mary gets up, they get up with her and follow her out. When she cries and wails, they cry and wail. This kind of community is really beautiful. Now let's talk about the disciples. Now they just got back from Jerusalem where a mob came pretty close to stoning Jesus. So in verse 7, when Jesus gets around to saying, let's go back to Judea, they think it's a terrible idea. They are afraid for their friend Jesus and they are afraid for themselves. Finally, Thomas says, what the heck? Who wants to live forever? Let's all go. They were afraid, but they still followed Jesus. We shouldn't let that go unnoticed. They had faith and gumption. So do a lot of people. And finally, let's take a look at Jesus himself. Everyone else sees what is happening only from their own limited perspective. But Jesus, like his heavenly father, sees the big picture, sees everything that is happening and how it is all connected. He says back in verse 4 that what is happening will ultimately bring glory to God and also to the Son of God. And he's right. It does. They all see it. The disciples, the crowd, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus see this amazing miracle that fills them with awe and just astounded at the glory of God. And we get to see it too by going back and reading our Bibles and hearing this story. In verse 9, Jesus also points out that we also need to be diligent in our use of time. There are only so many hours of light, and we need to use them well. Jesus has already proclaimed himself the light of the world by this time in John. Let us be faithful to him while we may. In verse 25, he says this, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. And then he asks the question, do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? I hope that you do. It, it's such a deep reassurance, comfort, a rootedness that you know, the storms of life can move us in the leaves and branches, but the trunk and the root rooted in Jesus stays the same. If anybody ever wants to talk about this or to work through some of it, or if you got crazy questions or even pointed questions, that's all fine. I would love to have those conversations. And at the end of the story, Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe. And then he says, Lazarus, come out. And out he comes, reborn to the world, eyes blinking in the light. And then Jesus says, unwrap him and let him go. Because honestly, Jesus came to set us free. Following Jesus is not a matter of being bound. It's about freedom. He freed Lazarus from death. He freed Mary and Martha from grief. He freed the crowd from their doubts. He freed the disciples from their fear. Praise be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may God bless you richly this day and keep you and all of yours safe in this tense time. After the sermon, we had a significant period of praying uh, in the church for people that we know and for those who are in need and for doctors and nurses who are working hard and um, know that we appreciate you and we care about you and we continue to lift you up in prayer. Good day, all.